The Ibiza Twins Resort talks a big game, but in reality, they don't deliver on all fronts. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and I make honest and to the point narrated video tours about hotels and flights all over the world. This is episode 124, and today we're on the idyllic southern shore of the Spanish island of Ibiza. The full tour is going to begin in 10 seconds. And welcome to Ibiza. First things first, I'll allow my taxi driver to give you a tour of the hotel's two towers. The first one being Joy, and the second one being Life. I'll explain what that means in a minute. For now, if you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for this all-inclusive stay, check out the description below. But first, a very quick riddle. What do, let's say, untimely pizza breaks, seagulls with willpower, and sponsored unbiased reviews all have in common? Well, none of them exist. It is impossible to give a place or a product a fair review if the owner of the company is paying you, which is why this video is unsponsored and you're only going to get my own honest opinions because this hotel stay is 100% self-funded. And so whether you are researching your next trip or just daydreaming about one from the past, if you enjoy and appreciate authentic travel content, please consider giving this channel a sub and checking out my Patreon in the description below. Y'all are the sponsors of this video, so a big thank you in advance for stopping by. Okay, so now we're walking into the Life Building, which is where my room was. When I got out of the taxi, it was just a lucky guess that I ended up on the correct side. When you book your room, you'll choose if you want a Life Room, where the style's a bit breezy and comfortable, or a Joy Room, which is a bit more modern and colorful. Each of the buildings has its own separate reception area, as I mentioned, and its own primary bar in addition to the remainder of the food and beverage venues, which we'll take a look at soon. At the end of the lobby, we're brought to the central outdoor lounge area. Spread over seven floors in the two buildings, there are a total of 495 rooms. And if you think that sounds like a lot for the size of this property, yes, yes it is. Let's take a quick look at the location since that is one of the primary selling points here. The hotel, which was recently renovated, is located in between the airport and the pedestrian-friendly Old Town. It's just a 10 or 15 minute ride by taxi to either of them. Though you can walk to the Old Town in under 30 minutes, which is likely how you'd be getting there since trying to get a taxi in Ibiza during high season is kind of like pulling teeth from a great white. Much of Ibiza has rocky coasts, and so the beaches are not sandy beaches like you'd see in Hawaii or Phuket, but the small marinas around the island certainly do add their own charm. While the resort is all-inclusive, there's also a quote-unquote foodie truck which sells supplemental lunch items in addition to the central restaurant in the core and the buffet. This is the primary outdoor lunch area and where the entertainment at night is located. You'll notice that the floors are wet, and that's because the entire core, the core being what they call this lounge space in between the two buildings, is scrubbed and hosed down early in the mornings, and that's when I'm filming. Style-wise, if I had to make one critique about the resort as a whole, this whole core area in the middle here is just completely devoid of any character or color or style. As we head through the core to the Joy reception area, let's talk about what the hotel does have going for it. Like I mentioned, it is conveniently located and cleanliness here was truly top notch. For the life of me, I can't find the opening date or rather the reopening date when it rebranded to the twins, but their Facebook page was created in June of 2019, which makes sense given the condition of just about how everything seemed brand new. The service is good, better than I expected actually. Around 30 minutes after I checked in, another guest, with a key in hand, just entered my room. He was as surprised as I was. Mistakes happen. This is a weird one, but not worth a big fuss. But the speed that the reception staff fixed the situation was impressive, and they even followed up with me later in the day to explain what at least they think happened. Service in the restaurants was also efficient and fairly warm. The low points of the hotel for me, 80% of it had to do with the food. A little bit the lack of easy access to the water in the mornings, and a few small things in the room which we'll look at soon. You just saw the restaurant The Healthy Point, which serves salads and smoothies and such during the day, some of which are chargeable, and here's the Joy Bar, and then El Embarcadero, 
the secondary breakfast restaurant. The primary one is open from 8 a.m. until 10.30. On this side, the smaller restaurant is open from 9 until noon. Did I mention Ibiza and early mornings don't really mix? The primary pool area is oriented towards the water and is freshly set up each morning. And despite the hotel's efforts to prevent it, many chairs are reserved by guests the moment that the area is opened at 9.30. And by mid-afternoon, it's always really crowded. Keep in mind that this hotel has capacity for over 1,000 people. All right, let's head up to my room. Through the eye-opening hallway, we're led to room 1515. The rooms are small but functional and modern, but feel a bit cheap. Things like the desk or the floor is feeling a bit cheap, I don't really mind it, especially in this kind of hotel. But beds and linens I do care about, and here, they're as scratchy as those $3 sheets that you can buy at Ikea. In fact, my stays at Malia, Iberostar, Rio, Barcelo, and here all featured pretty crappy bedding. Surprises me that it just seems to be so universal for Spanish chains. The rooms had decent connectivity, and upon checking in, the staff gave you all the information that you needed about the inclusive inclusions, the layout of the hotel, and they strongly encouraged you to grab a drink on your way back up to the room. The mini bar is also included. My only other complaint about the living area of the room is the desk, which is very low, and the stubby stool, which is not very low. So unless you have itsy bitsy thighs, you're likely going to not be pulling your chair up too close to the desk or slamming your legs into the desk every time you pull up. The bathroom was more or less split into thirds with the walk-in shower on the left, a large vanity and basin in the middle, and a toilet nook on the right side. Across from the bathroom was the closet and storage area, which for a room like this was more than sufficient. And last but definitely not least was the balcony and the refreshing view from it. Two notes out here. First of all, while I do think that the design of the life rooms are nicer, they bake all afternoon long with direct sun. If you're coming here during the summer, I would definitely go for a room on the joy side. Second thing is the upper platform, which you can see here down in the core, cleverly named the upper level. That is a separate swimming pool and lounge area reserved exclusively for guests staying in suites. All right, let's head down to dinner, take a look at the food, and I'll talk about the included drinks. Since the buffet hours are relatively limited, open from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. for dinner, there was always a crowd waiting to get in when the doors opened, leading us into a restaurant with the distinct ambiance of a very pleasant hospital cafeteria. Like I mentioned, the food was the low point of the property for me. The selection at dinner was decent and probably actually a little bit better than I was expecting but the quality of the products and the seasoning and cookery itself was just not that great. When I was there, the first thing honestly that popped into my mind was a group of university guys who don't cook, 
hosting all of their families at their dorm apartment for dinner. And so they did their very best to serve up a decent meal. But at the end of the day, it's not that great. It was edible, and I suppose it's better to be bland than too salty, so I'll just leave it at that. As we finish looking around, let me just quickly finish up my thoughts about the taxis here. On the entire island of Ibiza, there are something like 80 taxis, which does double during high season, but that's still not a lot. There's a taxi stand in front of the hotel, and after I checked out, I needed to wait in line for around 35 minutes for a taxi since I was 7th in line. In theory, the hotel calls for taxis when they're needed, but they're always needed. Make sure you plan enough time if you're flying out, or arrange private, separate transportation. For included drinks, draft beer, well and mid-shelf alcohols, and decent table wines were included. Other beer bottles and higher shelf liquors were available for an extra charge, though there really wasn't anything all that premium on offer. After dinner was something that, after reading a whole lot of reviews that mentioned it, I was looking forward to. The resort puts on nightly entertainment shows in the core, and I'll be honest, the quality of it was actually pretty good. I can't play the music for copyright reasons, but I'll just give you a super quick clip of it here to give you an idea of what's on offer. The next morning, as always, I headed out in search of a beautiful sunrise. And while I did eventually find it, it took a bit of a detour since the hotel locks the doors that connect the beach walk area to the core until 9.30 every morning. But the walk around the hotel was certainly worth it, with a beautiful sunrise coming up from behind the port. All right, we're in the home stretch and we're heading down to breakfast in the same La Salle buffet restaurant. At this point, I think it was exactly what I was expecting. Again, decent selection, just not the greatest quality, but the coffee was actually very good. And with that, let me remind you in case you haven't seen one before, why I'm committed to doing both five and four star hotel and resort reviews. Four star hotels are the ones that almost everyone truly does use. If you normally stay in three star hotels, Surely, sometimes you treat yourself to a four-star. If you stay at five-star hotels normally, surely sometimes you just want an affordable, quick getaway and a four-star fits the bill. A three-star, four-star, or five-star hotel, they could all have a perfect score on this channel. It's all about the experience, relative to the price, the competition, and how they present themselves. All of that said, let's get on to the flip-flop score. I don't think there's going to be any surprises here. If the food was better, the experience would have been very different. But it is what it is, and you could certainly do worse. If you want to do a little bit better, give this video a like and consider subscribing so that you see my next video at the Barcelona Portinat on the North Shore of Ibiza, which I will tell you in advance, I did really enjoy.